Yes, hi, I'm Bert Schietegatte, one of the founders of uh, Percasa. Celine uh, is over there, that's co-founder. Um, so uh, here at Napcon, uh, we're showing our uh, new Synthor modular synthesis system, which consists of a piece of software running on the Mac and the PC, uh, a remote control surface, which you see over here, which connects to the computer via USB, and it's also the base station for our uh, wireless Pro audio cubes, which you can see on the table. What I wanted to do with the cubes is to make things that exist in the software graspable. So concepts that exist typically in music software, like modules, for example, you know, you can't really grasp them. They exist in the software, or they might exist somewhere as a section of a big synthesizer, but you typically cannot immediately grasp them and do something with them. And so the whole idea of tangible interfaces, which is a really big research area, by the way, is to make those things that you can't grasp graspable through objects which physically represent those things. So rather than like having a mouse where you like point and click in an interface or you touch something on a touch interface, you, the idea is that you have these devices present in your working or living environment and you directly interact with these objects to do something on a computer somewhere. So this is the underlying philosophy or, or idea of this system as well. Well, uh, one way to, to understand or to follow what's going on is by you looking at the colors. So here the colors uh, all represent one specific kind of module. So the green ones are the oscillators, for example. The yellow one is the output cube. The blue one is an envelope. Um, and when you change the role of those cubes in the software from like, let's say, oscillator to envelope or whatever, the color also changes. Now, of course, you can override the colors in the software as well using the remote control surface. You can mix the colors any way you want. Um, so color is a very simple way to remember which cube or which module is, is what, essentially. And then in the software, of course, we have visualizations like um, this envelope generator where you can play with the parameters and instantly see what's going on. So the remote, the remote uh, control surface here is basically what you use to configure the software and what you use to interact with the software beyond the other cubes patching system. Because it, the, the role of the cubes is really to patch and to modulate and to patch on the fly and to experiment with routings between modules. Whereas the role of this control surface is to configure the cubes and the software and the modules and to like set very specific settings like frequencies of certain modules or to call up new presets. Like let's say you have a preset with five oscillators and next song you're playing, you need like five noise generators or whatever. You just yeah, press that button and instantly you have a new preset and everything is configured the way you want it to be. And then of course you have the encoders here on the control surface which allow you to play with those parameters in real time too during your live performance. So the, the control surface, I mean the remote control surface is, is kind of like the yin, the yin of like, you know, whereas the cubes are the yang or whatever you want to look at it. It's like the two parts that together create a complete system for like sound experimentation and performance. And we've made it such that all the functions that you need to work with in the software are accessible from this control surface. So there is n normally no need absolutely to, to mess with anything in the software using your mouse. And so um, in the software, you can configure all kinds of different synthesis modules, uh, so things such as noise generators, filters, envelope generators, step sequencers, uh, all sorts of stuff, sampler module, wavetable oscillator. And all those modules are automatically linked to the cubes, which you can see on the table. And then uh, by putting the cubes together, you're basically patching. And so you can determine um, which connections can be created and which can not be created using the depth editor in the software. So in the software, you have a list of possible inputs and outputs, uh, which you can set for all the different modules. And so you can say, okay, this cube can only modulate frequencies, can only modulate amplitudes or the clock of a step sequencer or whatever. And then you can save all, all that stuff as a preset and you can switch um, between the presets with the press of a button. So I can go to like this global menu and pick another preset and all the cubes instantly reconfigure and get assigned to different modules. And um, so as a quick demo, I have a preset here which has just three oscillators, the three green cubes. And I have this yellow cube, which is the output cube. 
And when I put one of these next to the, to, um, the yellow cube, you get a signal. So this is just a sine wave. And as I move the cube closer and further away, the signal becomes louder or, or quieter. I can do the same thing with the other oscillators, so I can add another one. Now you have two tones, and if you, if you move that one closer, it's the same thing, it grows louder. Now you have a third cube. Now you have three tones. Then, if I want to change the frequency of any of those oscillators, I can do that right here in the software. I can choose any of those cubes simply by pressing these buttons. So as I press these different buttons, different cube lights up. So let's say I take that one, I want to change the uh, frequency, I can just do that like that. So this is a coarse setting, then I have a fine setting to fine tune it. I can also change the waveform, of course, of the square wave, triangle, sawtooth. Um, so I have a noise generator here. If I put that next to the yellow cube, you get noise with variable frequency. And then if you put the filter in between it, you get like it's kind of like a rumbling noise because it gets through the goes through this filter and of course you can sweep the cutoff um, of the filter using uh, you know the controls here on the remote but then you can change the cutoff of that filter using the DC, DC cube which is just outputting a steady level Another interesting example is like if you have a step sequencer and you drive the clock of that with something else. Like you have, so let's take the output cube and you take the sampler module, which has a bunch of TR-808 samples in it. And then you put the step sequencer next to that. And now you'll see that nothing is happening yet because it doesn't have a clock yet. But when I put the oscillator next to it, it starts running. If I take it away, it stops. If you go to the sampler module, you can look at the different files that have been loaded just by tapping the view button. And you can also play with the start and the length of the samples. So now, as I move closer here, I'm playing more of the sample. Whereas if I go away, I play, I play later, I play like a later portion of it, so you don't hear it as much. Ah, this is the wavetable in wave um, demo. So I have a wavetable oscillator here. So if you go to the wavetable oscillator, you can see that there is already a sample loaded. I can chop up that sample like this. I can cut it into up to 256 pieces. And you can load really big samples too, like files of like 15 megabytes or whatever. And then you can essentially change the index like this. And then you can modulate, modulate this wavetable oscillator using other oscillators like this one, for example, or that one. And one will modulate the index and the other one the frequency. So this is the frequency modulation, and this is the index modulation. So that one is outputting a signal that's like changing the index on that oscillator. And of course, if you move it closer and further away, the index modulation changes because the signal that's modulating is also changing in, in amplitude. So now you have frequency and index modulation at the same time. Uh, this is uh, classic FM stuff. This is 
is just two Southwood oscillators which are being played back. And then as you put these next to each other, you can get frequency modulation. And so the cool thing is these two uh, cubes are configured such that one will modulate the frequency and the other one will modulate the amplitude. So when you change the order of the cubes, when they are next to the output cube, you get a different kind of modulation. And here, the other way around. You get a completely different kind of modulation. Now this is uh, an envelope that you can use to modulate that oscillator, which is modulating that one. So now you have an, an uh, envelope modulating the pitch of the oscillator which is modulating, I think, the frequency of that oscillator and then the signal goes to the output. Um, well, there are several artists who have been using the cubes in the past um, for controlling, let's say, Ableton Live or Maxim SP or some you know, hardware device like, a, like an electron drum machine or whatever. I mean, you can still do that. You can still use our MIDI bridge software, which is available on our website to hook up the cubes to anything that's MIDI compatible. And then you can use the triggers from the cubes and the distance signals to control effects or like start and stop things. But um, I mean, that's how people have classically used the cubes. But now with the addition of this synthesizer software and our um, remote control service, the cubes really transition into something of a complete sound creation system and no longer like a component of a system or an accessory to the software you might be using or whatever.